Now we're finishing up our discussion of Chapter 4, The Chemical Basis of Behavior, by talking a little bit about substance-related disorders. So the main differentiation we need to make here is drug abuse versus drug dependence. And the main difference is whether or not there's drug tolerance or not. So in dependence, which is the more severe of the two, um, you not only have the desire to administer the drug, but also you have tolerance. So you have it where it takes more and more of the drug in order to have the same effect. Um, substance abuse is less, um, less severe, though it can certainly lead to dependence. And abuse is um, categorized, it has a pattern of use that does not fully meet the criteria for dependence, but still is causing significant impairment in a person's life or in their functioning. So there are a couple different models of drug abuse. The first is the moral model. Uh, this was one of the earliest ways of explaining drug abuse. It was thought that the abuser lacked some type of moral character and self-control, and that divine intervention was needed for the cure. Uh, this has um, really been replaced a lot by the disease model, which um, states that the, the abuse is actually a disease that requires medical treatment. The catch is that the, um, the catch with this is that typically a disease has either a biological or a chemical abnormality, which neither has been found in abuse, so that's a big chink in the armor. Um, However, there's evidence that there may be a genetic predisposition towards abuse. So that's the argument that's been made, is it still fits the disease model and that there does seem to be that genetic predisposition. The physical, oops, come in. Okay, picking up on the slide in just a couple seconds. The physical dependence model postulates that people uh, keep using a drug to avoid withdrawal symptoms. And the way to treat them is to give them ways to avoid the withdrawal symptoms as much as possible. This made some sense because the withdrawal symptoms are often the opposite of the drug's effect. So if a drug is pleasurable on the way up, it's usually pretty miserable on the way down. However, taking a drug again quickly ends the withdrawal symptoms, which is why it's thought that this may be a cycle that just continues. Um, so one way of treating this is through drugs like methadone, which um, is related to heroin and helps reduce the cravings without creating much of a high. Uh, the positive rewards model is that drugs are pleasurable and that's why people do them. Uh, many animal studies have shown that animals will work for drugs. In fact, rats will work at some of the highest rates recorded for cocaine. So you have to factor in that drugs are just naturally reinforcing, at least some are. And that may be the reason why people uh, use drugs. Many addictive drugs, as well as addictive behaviors, cause the release of dopamine in the nucleus accumbens. This is important because dopamine released in the nearby VTA um, has been associated with reward feelings. Thus, it's thought that this may be why addictions are pleasurable, as they lead to dopamine release, and the dopamine release appears to be reinforcing. There are several factors that affect whether one will become abusive or dependent on drugs. Overall, men are more likely to abuse drugs than women. It also appears that if you have an addiction in your family, then you're more susceptible to addiction. Unstable family situations are also associated with drug abuse, as are certain per personal characteristics, such as aggressiveness and lack of emotional control. Lastly, environmental and social factors can also influence who ends up using drugs. So environmental stimuli can also become associated with the effects of drugs. Uh, this is called Q-induced drug use. It's an increased likelihood of using a drug because factors present um, are also factors that were present when the drug was last used. So it's like you know, having a person go to the bar and they want to drink because they're at a bar. Um, or we see this actually a lot. It's um, called stimulus control. You'll probably learn about it at some point down the line. But um, 
you have these associations with where you typically perform an activity. So let's use a non-drug example. Say that you always eat junk food on the couch, and the, these things are often paired. Over time, you'll sit down on the couch and you'll get a craving for junk food. Same thing happens here with alcohol or with a drug. You go to where you typically use it and that craving kicks in. So one way to help reduce this is by either keeping the person away from that cue or in therapy you can actually relearn that association. You can have that cue become associated with something else. But that's beyond the scope of this class. You can take my grad class if you want to learn about that. There are also many ways that medications have been used to treat drug addiction. Benzodiazepines have been used to help reduce withdrawal symptoms, which is in line with the physical dependence model of abuse. Um, similarly, agonists of the addictive drug that are not as dangerous have been used to help reduce cravings and also keep the person abstinent. Examples of this are methadone or nicotine gum or patch. Um, in line with the reward view of addiction, antagonists of the drug have been used to block the effects of the abused drug. However, these can also create withdrawal symptoms. Medications that alter metabolism um, can also be used to create unpleasant side effects of the substance. Um, however, adherence with these is very poor. Uh, the example I'm referring to is there's a medication called Anabuse that you can take, and if you drink alcohol with taking Anabuse, you'd become very sick. So what will often happen is you'll have someone just not take Anabuse the day that they plan on drinking, which completely defeats the purpose of it. Um, while it has been used, researchers have been looking at ways to block the mesolimbocortical um, reward, <laughs> reward system. I apologize. Mesolimbocortical reward system. However, the downside to this is it would create a complete lack of pleasurable feelings, and this would not be an ideal solution. In a similar vein, drugs that block cravings have been created in order to help reduce um, the urge to use, and thus hopefully re reduce drug use. Um, however, if the drug is being used for pleasure, that doesn't help very much. Lastly, immunizations are being developed to hopefully have the body's immune system remove the target drugs from the bloodstream before they ever reach the brain. However, the flip side of this is there are times that these substances are medically necessary. So having immune, immunity to them would be a real bummer. So, as you can see, there's not a silver bullet. There's no one great treatment um, or preventative treatment. But there are a lot of things that we're working on that may help reduce um, drug use and abuse. And over time, we'll keep finding better ways to help prevent people from getting on drugs and once they're on better understanding the reasons that they're using the drugs and try to find ways to help replace the drugs so they don't have to be using them.